Hands on with the 6th generation 2018 $329 iPad. It features Apple Pencil compatibility, but does that make it worth it? Check it out. So we got the 6th generation iPad in the house. We're gonna unbox it right now, and we're gonna talk about this thing because it's a very interesting product. Um, it's the first iPad that's not a pro model to feature Apple Pencil compatibility, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should just run out and upgrade if you have last year's version or if you have an older iPad like an iPad Air 2. You may want to actually hold off on the upgrades, and we're going to talk about why that may be. Now, this sixth generation iPad is very, very similar to last year's fifth generation iPad. There are a few notable changes, which we'll discuss in this video. Number one, obviously, is Apple Pencil compatibility. You also get a slightly different take on gold. It's sort of between rose gold and regular gold, and you get that faster E10 processor. Now, in the box, it's the standard fare. You get your USB-A to lightning cable inside. That allows you to charge and to sync with your Mac. You get your standard fare designed by Apple in California packet, and that includes tips, regulatory information, and of course, the most important thing in the whole box, this right here, <laughs> the Apple stickers, of course. Now you also get your USB power adapter. This is like last year, a 12 watt USB power adapter. And of course, you'll need that to recharge your iPad. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 sixth generation iPad. Let's take the protective plastic off just set that aside, flip it over, and there we go. So just like last year's model, a 9.7 inch display, a 2048 by 1536 retina display. So corner to corner, 9.7 inches, but still lacks a laminated screen. We'll touch on that in a second. So here's the rear. You see that gold color, sort of a cross between rose gold and standard gold. Here's your eight megapixel rear facing camera with 1080p HD recording. Here's your 1.2 megapixel FaceTime HD camera, 720p. You got a pair of speakers on the bottom. And of course you have your lightning port for charging and for syncing. On the top, you have a couple of microphones and you have something here. I don't know what that is. It's, I don't know, some kind of, no, of course, it's a headphone jack. You also have your home button, which is Touch ID enabled. This is a first gen Touch ID sensor. And then you have your volume buttons, volume up, volume down. You have your power button on top. And you have those color matched chamfered edges on the sides. Looks good. You have your iPad text and serial numbers and whatnot at the bottom. And of course, your color matched Apple logo. So that's a walkthrough of the features. Now let's talk about specifications. First of all, this thing is powered by an A10 system on a chip, the same chip that was in the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So it's no slouch. In fact, you can see how fast it boots up and it's ready to go after just a few seconds. Now, this is an A10 chip, so the Geekbench scores you get in about 3,500 single core, almost 6,000 multi-core, compare that with last year's model, 2381 single core, about 4,000 or so multi-core. So an obvious improvement over last year's A9 powered model, and that will directly translate to better performance on games and better performance on anything that taxes out that CPU. Now last year I did this test comparing the first gen iPad Pro to the 2017 iPad, exporting a 4K movie, and they were close, very, very much close. The iPad Pro still won just by a couple of seconds. So now I'm gonna do the same test again. This is again, the first gen iPad Pro compared to the 2018 iPad. And you can see the 2018 iPad actually was just a hair faster this time. But what that really tells me is that the original iPad Pro is still a beast. Now camera performance is nothing to write home about. You get 1080p video at 30 frames per second on the rear facing shooter. You get eight megapixel stills. And that's nice, but compared to modern iPads with 4K video shooting and much higher quality still photos, it's just lackluster. And the FaceTime HD camera 720p video 1.2 megapixel stills is pretty pathetic at this point. You still get a first gen Touch ID sensor, but that's not a big deal because it performs fine. 
My biggest gripe like last year is that this iPad lacks eliminated digitizer and lacks the anti-reflective coating of more expensive models. That means you get that noticeable air gap and you get noticeable glare when under direct sunlight or any light source for that matter. But I will say with this being an education focused product, I can understand Apple's decision making here. It's cheaper to make and it's easier to repair. So what's the main reason to consider this iPad? This right here, the Apple Pencil. If you want the cheapest iPad you can buy with Apple Pencil support, this is it. Otherwise, you'll need to upgrade to one of the Pro models. Yes, this is the first non-Pro iPad with Apple Pencil support. So that's a big deal. You can get in the game relatively cheaply. Of course, $329 for the iPad, 100 bucks for the Apple Pencil, and you're ready to start annotating, drawing, sketching, taking notes, whatever the case may be, whatever you plan on using the Apple Pencil for, this is the cheapest way to get in the game. I've tested it out with several apps and I could say that the performance is really good. Now, it's not as good as the latest generation iPad Pro with that ProMotion display because that helps out with the Apple Pencil's responsiveness, but it is just as good as a first gen iPad Pro. And that's not really all that bad. That's actually pretty good, as you can see here. If you've never used an Apple Pencil, I suggest you head over to an Apple store, check it out, see if you like it. Chances are you're gonna love it because it is one of the best stylus experiences I've ever used. Even on this budget-minded iPad, which features older hardware inside. Now, not everyone should run and jump and upgrade to this. If you bought last year's model and you don't care about Apple Pencil support, then there's no need to upgrade to this iPad in my opinion. If you have an iPad Air 2, the decision is a little tougher because you don't get that laminated digitizer, which the iPad Air 2 has, but you do get Apple Pencil support, so you kind of have to weigh that out and see what you think. I would upgrade to a Pro model if I was coming from an iPad Air 2 for sure. But if you need Apple Pencil support and money is tight, then yeah, go ahead and check out the 2018 iPad. If you have the money to spare though, I highly suggest sticking with the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. Not only do you get Apple Pencil support, but you also get smart keyboard support, which this iPad doesn't have. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think about the 2018 iPad? Is it a good deal? Is it for you? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.